Hi, and uh, welcome to this next video where we introduce the cross entropy loss function. So the cross entropy loss function here is, I guess, it's presented in the middle of our videos on neural nets, but it's because it's one of the loss functions that you uh, typically go to if you want to train a neural net for a multi-class uh, classification. So let's just try in this short video and define the cross entropy loss function. And we're going to motivate it by going back and recalling what we did for multinomial uh, linear regression. Okay, so I'm going to go over it a little bit quickly uh, because we already covered it in the uh, multinomial uh, regression video early on. So you can uh, watch that one if you don't remember the details. Okay. But the basic idea is that in multinomial uh, regression, we're training a linear model and we're using the softmax uh, to predict one among K classes. So for instance, is the red wine, a white wine, or rosé. And the idea is we want to assign a probability of each of them, each of these classes as the output of a prediction. Right. So what we did then was that we used this uh, special representation of labels. So when we had more than two labels, we're not going to use the labels minus one and plus one, but we used this one in K encoding that we covered before, uh, where uh, if I have K different classes, then I represent a, a label as a vector with K uh, entries in it. One of, the, one of each of these coordinates corresponds to each of the K classes. And basically, if the label is the ith label, uh, then we put a one in the ith coordinate and zero everywhere else. So for instance, one representation of red wine rosé could be uh, one zero zero as a vector for red wine, zero one zero for white wine, and zero zero one for rosé. Okay, so those are uh, one. This is one way of representing these three different labels, and this is what's called the one in k encoding, right? So <clears throat> with this. Uh, notion with this 1k encoding, instead of the two class case where we have the data matrix with the feature vectors as rows and the labels as being minus one and plus one for k classes, the the label of vectors becomes a matrix uh, of labels here. Sorry, the, the, the vector of labels becomes a matrix of labels. Uh, still, we have one row of this matrix for each of the uh, n training examples. And each of them is this k dimensional vector, each of the rows that has a one in uh, in one of the coordinates indicating what the label is. And so each of the rows has a single one for each of the training data examples indicating what is the, the label of this training example and the rest of the K minus one uh, entries are zero. Okay. And then what we wanted to learn is that we wanted to learn given that any feature vector X, we would like to output basically the probabilities that the label is each of the K different classes uh, when we get access to the training examples, we want to output this uh, probability distribution. Okay, and this is what we did in multinomial uh, linear regression. So the way we, we did it there was that we said, okay, uh, the model now is going to consist of, in, in some sense, k different linear models. Uh, one of the each of them has d parameters that we will take the inner product with such a vector of parameters against the the feature vector x to obtain predictions. And basically, what we do is we stack these. D linear models in a matrix W with uh, K columns. Then we compute, when we want to make estimates, we compute the, we're going to take X as a row vector and multiply it onto W, giving us a row vector with one entry for each of the columns of W, so for each of the linear models, giving just the inner product between X and that, uh, uh, that linear model in some sense. And then the basic idea that we wanted to do was we wanted to map this vector of numbers into a probability distribution. So what we did was we used this inspiration from the sigmoid function and said that if I have a vector set, an uh, arbitrary real valued vector, then we defined the softmax function. Uh, and the softmax function is the one where we set the jth entry of the output vector. I take e to the set j, and then I divide it by the sum over all the coordinates of e to the set i. Right, so the denominator here makes sure that this, these uh, coordinates in the output vector sum to one, and they're always non-negative because uh, the exponential function is non-negative. Okay, so this is a way of mapping a vector of output set to a probability distribution. So the normalization makes sure that it sums to one. And right, so these were the parameters we had in multinomial uh, regression. So again, I'm going over it a little bit fast because we already have a video on it. So, so go and watch it if you, if you don't remember the details. So the way we trained this multinomial uh, regression classifier was that we said, okay, um, let's assume that once I have a fixed set of parameters W, let's pretend that actually uh, when I compute this softmax of X times W, so on every row uh, in this output here, I'm gonna get a vector of probabilities corresponding to the prediction in the first, the second, the third, and so on training example. 
Now, if we assume that these vectors of probabilities, uh, so they give probabilities of each of the K classes, if they actually give the true probabilities, then we could ask, you know, what would be the likelihood of seeing this training data that we actually saw, right? So we, what would be the likelihood of seeing these labels on the training examples? And we write this, so we assume, right, that uh, in, in all of these learning theory uh, things we've been studying, we assume that the training data are independent samples from the same distribution, which means that the probability of seeing all these, uh, this whole data set, if I tell you already what are the feature vectors, what is the model, then it would just be the probability over the, each of the training examples of the probability of seeing the label yi given this model w and uh, the feature vector xi. So, and now the important point was that, okay, if we assume that this vector, uh, this so a set of parameters w, if we apply the submax on x times w, if this actually gives the true uh, probabilities of all the different classes, then the thing is that the chance that we see the label yi is exactly the ith entry in the softmax vector, right? And one way to extract that ith entry is to take, well, I can take the vector y, the, uh, oh, sorry, the, the uh, so, oh, sorry, so this is the label, I can go to the label yi, that is some jth label, sorry, so then we go to the jth entry of the softmax vector, right? So y, the i indexes into the training examples, this is a vector, so the jth entry of that vector tells us the label, the one, the entry that is a one tells us the label. If that's the jth entry, then we should look up the jth entry in the softmax vector. So this is what we do down here, right? So we take this vector of labels. It has a single one somewhere indicating the, the actual class. And when we inner product this with the softmax vector, because it only has a single one, it's just going to extract that corresponding entry, entry in the softmax vector. And that entry is what we believe to give the true probability of seeing this label. That, that's the assumption. So this inner product between uh, the, ith, the, the label vector corresponding to the ith training example against the softmax vector, that gives the probability of seeing this label if indeed these predictions were correct. Okay, so this means that the probability of seeing all this training data is this product of all of them. Right, and then we just had to maximize over W. That was how we did in multinomial regression. Okay, so <clears throat> we want to maximize this over W. So how can we do this? Well, uh, what we did was that we then, we want to get rid of this product and we want to make it a minimization problem. Uh, so we just took a negative log of this expression and then we did scale by one over n to make it look like the kind of loss functions that we're used to. So it's the average over n training example of minus log of this term here, the inner product between yi and the softmax function. Okay. So, okay, so this is kind of as a summary of uh, how we did in multinomial regression. We ended up with this loss function down here. What I'm going to show you next is this cross entropy loss function, which is in some sense a generalization of this loss function here. So let's try to, to introduce it. Okay, so the cross entropy loss function is a loss function for uh, classification when you have multiple classes, similar to the one before. And it's a generalization of doing this negative log likelihood from multinomial uh, regression, and it's often used uh, for, uh, with neural nets for multi-class classification. Okay. So the basic idea is that we have a, it basically you can be applied whenever we have a machine learning model that's supposed to output K probabilities that sum to one, right? So. Uh, so, so basically they have K output neurons and they're supposed to be probabilities and uh, the jth output is supposed to be uh, the jth of these probabilities, right? So we're, we're trying to uh, uh, train a model that outputs probabilities. And uh, the intention is in all of these setups is that, well, the label belongs to one of K classes and uh, the idea is that the jth of these outputs should equal the probability of seeing the jth label given this feature vector X. And that's the general idea. This is when you would use this cross entropy loss function. So what does it look like? So it looks like this. So here's the definition. Uh, you sum over all the uh, K training examples, you take minus, then you take the jth entry of this uh, vector of labels Y, and then you multiply it with log of uh, the jth output of the model. Okay, so you, sometimes you take the, right, so you take all the entries of the, of the uh, label vector, and you multiply them each with log of the corresponding output of the, of the machine learning model with a negation in front. Okay. 
And the thing here is that uh, while this is a generalization, uh, here we allow even that labels could be, for instance, probability distribution. Right? You could imagine learning setups where maybe a label is actually a probability distribution. Maybe you measured some probabilities of some different uh, outcomes uh, for this given feature vector, right? So, uh, so the loss function here also works in the case where y is just a vector of probabilities that's sum to one. So in particular, it also works when, when y just has a single one and the rest of zero. Okay. So they're length k vectors, these two. Okay. And now, so this is the loss on a single training example. And now, of course, the in-sample error is then the average over n training examples of this loss, right? So we average over n examples, we take this point by its loss that we have above. Okay. So of course, right, when we have n examples, right, we index the examples by uh, an i, and then the entries, this is a, is a vector log length k, and then we in index that vector by the j. The same goes over here. We take the ith training example, we evaluate the machine learning model on it, and we take the jth output, right? So this is the ensemble loss when you're doing cross entropy loss, right? So this is the one that you would be using. So maybe let us just end by just discussing a little bit of where the name comes from and, and things like this. And maybe just, just compare it to the multinomial regression, right? So for multinomial regression, what we had was that the pointwise loss was this minus log of the inner product between the label vector y and the softmax vector. Here, the pointwise loss is the label y. Uh, you basically take each of the entries of the y vector and multiply it on to log of each of the entries of uh, the output or each of the outputs of the machine learning model. Okay, so in multinomial regression, right, uh, we always assumed that these label vectors uh, had a single one and the rest were zero. And this means that if I actually look at what this pointwise loss is, right, so, so what do we get here? What we actually get, right, is only the minus the log of the entry in the softmax vector where y is one, okay? So this is the same as actually the sum down here, because if we do this sum, then for the entries where y is zero, it doesn't matter what this log is, right, because it just disappears. And for the entry where y is one, you just get log softmax of that jth entry. And this is the same as what you take minus log of up here, right? So actually they're the same, which means if you compare this to the cross entropy loss, uh, right here we have that the softmax function, right? That has all the entries are uh, probabilities summing to one, right? The non-negative number summing to one, which is the only requirement we had of the loss function, right? That these x h of x j is all the entries of, of the output are non-negative numbers summing to one. So this is really, uh, so the loss function we use in multinomial regression is just a special case of the cross entropy loss function. Right? So this is, this is all it is, it's a generalization of it. And, Right, it has this loss, the setup instead, right? So, so this is just a summary of what this cross entropy loss. It's a loss function we can use for multi-class classification. The pointwise loss function, if you look at a single, exa single example, we sum over the j possible output classes. We take the jth entry of the label vector and multiply it with log of the jth entry of the output of the model, right? And then the ensemble error is that just the average over all training examples of this pointwise loss. And this is really useful for any machine learning model that's supposed to output k probabilities that sum to one, where the intention is that the jth output should be equal to um, the probability that the label uh, is uh, j. Okay, and the generalization is also we can allow for labels in the input vectors to be probability distributions as well. Okay. So basically, uh, the label vectors are just length k vectors, non-negative entries summing to one. Maybe let's just talk a little bit about the name. Where does the cross entropy? What where where does it come from, and why is it? You know, how can we use it to remember maybe what the formula looks like? And if you remember the decision tree video uh, quite long ago, uh, we saw how we could train decision trees using this notion of entropy. Uh, so the basic setup was that maybe I have a set of k different labels in a set, and I have n i of the ith label. Okay, then we could let p i be the fraction of these points in the set that have the ith label, right? So the, in some sense, the probability that if I pick a random one of these points in the set, that it has the ith label. So that's pi. And then the entropy here was the sum of all the k classes minus pi log pi. And this entropy is a measure in information theory. It's called the Shannon entropy measure. And in some sense, it measures the uncertainty in the distribution. And the higher it is, the more uncertainty uh, there is. Okay. 
So if we look at this expression, right? So the loss function that we have up here for, multi, um, for cross entropy loss looks like this, right? So the sum or the classes yj log uh, the jth output of the model. And down here we have the entropy if I have a probability distribution, right? If I have y1 to yk, basically these are the probabilities from before, right? If I have these uh, k probabilities that sum to one, then the entropy uh, of this as a distribution would be minus the sum of all these j probabilities yj times log yj. So we can already see the similarity to the cross entropy loss function, right? This first term here is the same, right? We're just summing the yj's and the yj's. And really, if we, you know, if we replace this log, uh, the natural log by a log two, then you can see that basically I could also look at the entropy of the output of the machine learning model, like the HX, the, the HX, right? That's also a probability vector because that one would have the sum of HXJ log uh, HXJ. So this is really, you kind of mix the two terms, right? So you mix the expression for the entropy of the label vector with the vector of the entropy for uh, the output of the model, right? So that's maybe, the, it's a crossing, I guess, of the two uh, expressions for the entropy of uh, the label vector and the entropy of the output of the, of the model. There's the change of base of the log. As a loss function, it doesn't matter because, because uh, the natural logarithm and the uh, log base two uh, are equal up to a constant scaling factor. And a constant scaling factor doesn't matter if we're minimizing a loss function, right? If it's the same scaling factor that's applied to, to everything. And maybe that's where the name comes from. And this is the cross entropy loss function. Again, just all we have here is just that this is the expression for it. This is if you, for the point wise loss, this is the general ensemble error. And it can be used in these setups that we just described before. Okay. Uh, so let me just maybe end on a practical optimization that is often being done when you use the cross entropy loss. Uh, so let's say you're training a neural net for multiple class uh, classification and you have these output neurons. And in these setups, when you have multi-class classification, right, you typically use these softmax neurons in the last layer. Right, so that basically computes the softmax of the, on the previous layer of, uh, of the net. Right, so this, this takes care of uh, making sure that we output probability summing to one. And the previous layer, it, it often has identity just below so that you can have like arbitrarily large and small values, uh, these set ones to set Ks that can enter these neurons. Okay. Now, if I wanted to train such a machine learning model using cross entropy loss, I would actually do a practical uh, hack. And that is just to show, just for numerical stability, uh, this softmax layer can be a little bit annoying, particularly if you have to compute these large numbers, these E to the set Is. Uh, this can be numerically unstable. And in particular, we also saw some tricks for trying to get rid of it when we talked about multinomial regression. Uh, but this, this is in general can be an issue that we have these large numbers. So what you can do while you're training it is in some sense, uh, get rid of this softmax layer and put it into uh, the loss function. In particular, right, there are no weights on these edges here before the output layer. So if, when you're training, you're anyways only training stuff that's sitting below uh, the softmax layer. So in some sense, we can kind of ignore this. And then what we can do instead is that, well, in the loss function, we just kind of introduce the softmax on the loss function. And the way we do it is really that we can say, well, the model right now outputs these set Js. So what we can do is just, well, we know we actually would like to train it as if it had taken a softmax at the end. So maybe we can just, we can just plug in the softmax function into the loss, right? So we're just defining a new loss function that it, includes the softmax expression in here. And the nice thing, I guess, is that the softmax is this e to the zj or the sum of the e to the zis. And this log at least behaves nicely together with this e to the zj, right? It just becomes a set j. And of course, right, you still have to take log of the sum of the exponentials. And we saw some tricks for how to do that uh, computationally. Uh, in, a more, in a numerically stable way in, uh, before, right? So, so this is something you can do if you wanted to train uh, neural net in practice. Uh, this would be a good, uh, good choice just to make it more numerically stable. And of course, what, right, when you train it as if the softmax layer was there, the important point is that once you're done training your machine learning model, you fixed all the weights inside your neural net, then you just reintroduce the softmax layer uh, such that it's ready for when you make predictions, right? You actually, you kind of just pretended that it, uh, you removed it, but pretended it was still there when you're, uh, by adapting the loss function, right? So you just have to reintroduce it at the end when you want to make predictions using such a, such a model.
right? So, so that's a practical optimization. And I guess this ends the discussion here of the cross entropy loss function.